Hello guys, we are back with a, another jungle guide. This time we're going to be looking at Viego jungle and giving a brief overview on how to play Viego. So, first things first, we're going to look at runes. So, for Viego, he actually does, usually champions have set runes, but um, you're going to switch between Conqueror and PTA. And most of the time you're going to want to go Conqueror, but in some situations when you're versing a lot of ranged champs, you want PTA because uh, you're not going to get Conqueror stacks against ranged champs unless they don't know how to kite. But most people do, so you'll be going Conqueror most of the time, but PTA for example if you're versing Kindred. Um, Triumph, just the best uh, best setup for Viego, the, the reset champ, and you get resets. Um, Legend Tenacity and Alacri. So this is the other two choices you're going to have. Um, if they have a lot of CC, I'll go Tenacity. Um, but if not, Alacrity is just very useful because you're very similar to a Master Yi if you think about Viego's kit. You just have a bit more utility. Uh, Coup de Gras, your reset champion, just like Katarina as well and Master Yi. And you'll go Brutes and Cosmic. Sometimes you can go Resolve, um, like Conditioning and Re Revitalize can be good, but otherwise it's just these two, Cosmic and Magical Footwear. Attack Speed, AD and Armor. MR if you're versus an AP champion. Um, health per level can be good, but yeah, I mean, I'm in a hurry, let's, so let's get into it. Armor is not Armor can be good, um, or oh, sorry, health level can be good, but a lot of the time uh, it's a scaling rune, so just depends if you feel like you want to scale. So for itemization for Viego, we are going to go uh, Ember Knife, Red Smite, purely based on the fact that you have uh, your passive, which gives you auto attack double slash auto attack and your a lot of your kit has auto attack resets so very very good synergy with um, that item and on your first base you're going to be looking for either Kraken Slayer or Divine Sunderer so whichever item path you're gonna go um, ideally you want Noon Quiver first base if not you get Pickaxe and Longsword um, if you're going Divine Sunderer, you're looking for Sheen and Longsword on first base. Um, I pref I've pref preferred that over Col Cauliflower, aka Coalfield's Hammer, Warhammer. Um, they're both 1100 gold, but yeah, I just prefer first base Sheen and Longsword. Then you would build, um, the Warhammer, and then you'll build Kinder Gem last. And after you complete one of these two items, so let's just say I go Kraken Slayer, and why I'll go Kraken Slayer in some scenarios is versus Kindred, for example, or a lot of ranged champs, which is very, very situational. So we buy that. Um, our next item should be Collector to synergize with the crit. Um, and we always go Dirk first, then Pickaxe next. And um, for third item, we'll go Death Dance. And beyond that is completely situational. You might go Blade, you might go GA, you might go uh, Wits End. I don't like Wright's recommendations here. Wits, yeah, you might go GA um, and Blade, depending. But, you know. This is, that's very situational, but, um, so now onto the main build, which you're going to be building most of the time. So, say you complete Sunderer, you're definitely going to look for Blade. Um, if it's a type of game where you're not the main DPSer, and you're not the one that is fed, I would definitely go Death Stance second, and then try to build Blade third, or Wits End third, depending if they have a lot of AP or not. Well, Blade and Witsen, I know Blade recently got nerfed. But it's still 
a very very good item on Viega. Synergized very well. That's why they call him the Blade of the Rune King. Um, so these two items are very good and you know I would after you either build Blade or Witsen, I'll definitely go GA. Okay guys, so here is what you're going to have to max. So you're going to be maxing Q first, then E and W last overall. But there are some scenarios where um, VO can be more optimized. So as you can see in this game, I put two points in Q before I leveled E at level four. And the reason that is, is because VO clears better if you put two points in Q. Um, but if you are level 3 ganking, consider leveling E, which I will get into later, and the reasons why you would level E. But overall, 2 points Q if you're clearing, and 1 point in E at level 3 if you are looking for a gank. And sometimes here, as you can see, I started W first. The reason why I started W Leveling for a level 1 fight or um, level 1 invade is extremely strong because your W is a very long CC. So you stun people for a very long time, especially level 1. Um, people don't expect you to level W and it's a gap close. And yeah, that is the skill order. So let's break down Viego's um, abilities and what's important, what's to know. So. Viego is passive, um, it gives him basically the reset, which is one of his strongest uh, attributes as a champion, his ability to reset and take someone else's champions and abilities and items or stats and use it for himself. And um, during this phase you also get your ulti after about 1.5 seconds. So yeah, it says here it lasts 10 seconds. Uh, the other really good thing about Viego's passive is his on-hit ability, which I don't know if it's in his passive or his Q, but regardless, it doesn't matter. It says it's in his Q, so you strike twice, which is extremely valuable for on-hit items. That's why Blade, Witsen are great items for him, um, if you can build it and if you can accumulate enough gold. So... Your main ability is actually going to be your passive. Everything else that uh, is important is not as important as your passive. Your Q and your W are going to be based on utilizing your passive. So when you hit Q, it's not it's important to hit Q, not because of the Q damage, but because of your potential passive auto attack. And using your W is exactly the same. Hitting the W for the CC, not just the stun, but after you CC them, you can slash them twice with your passive. Um, so this is going to be your main clearing ability. This is going to be your gap closing ability, your W. Your E is going to be your also a gap closing ability. And um, I guess the difference between you playing Master Yi and playing Viego um, because you have two utilities. You have a stun, you have a stealth, you have movement speed, you have a gap closer um, and your ult also gives you sort of that old Aatrox revive if you guys remember where you could not be targeted for a bit uh, if you reset on someone so this is why Viego in my opinion is just a better version of Master Yi and your ulti will also be something um, that you have to kind of think about. I will explain later why I say Master Yi, why I say Katarina is because you are squishy. Even if you build tanky, you are still squishy. Um, there's a lot of tanky Viego builds out there, but you will still die easily. So using your ulti correctly is very important. We will talk about that later. All right, guys, so now we're going to be talking about the first clear. And one of the great things about Viego is you can clear either side. So for this game and this scenario, I'm clearing 
uh, from top to bottom because we have a set versus Norlis. But the great thing about Vigo is you can start either side, as I said. And you see how I pull the blue right next to the Gromp um, before the Gromp spawns. And then I use my Q range to aggro both of them and smite the blue. Um, I prefer to just clear like this. Let me mute. I prefer to clear like this instead of tank two of the camps just for health reasons. Uh, you know, staying healthy is just as important, especially when I'm soloing. And notice how I auto the mini ones when their passive is ticked. And that's all it takes. Two Qs and an auto from uh, your passive. And again, as I've said before, two points Q. It's going to help see how it helped uh, clear my raptors a lot easier. And on Viego, usually you can full clear like 320. I was a bit delayed there because I was thinking about whether to come to the fight. Um, so I'm a bit delayed. I decide to smite just because I know I'm going to full clear. But this is um, a really good setup. So let's rewind back. Um, this. There's some options for you guys if you see it because uh, generally full clearing is not the end goal. Like you generate more gold if you get a kill, right? And you generate more EXP because you tax, tax your laners, you know? Um, you got California tax, the state tax, um, national tax, all these, all these things we got to learn from the government. So what I mean by that is uh, for example, if I'm doing three camps and I see my mid laner is pushed up, uh, or their mid laner is pushed up, but my mid laner is pushed up in this situation, I'm always looking for a level three gank here. To wrap around um, the ramp and W someone is really effective. Um, and also, I get to choose. So if I was going to level three gank here, I wouldn't put two points in Q, I'll put a point in E. And that's what I was explaining before. You have a lot of flexibility. You can start red or blue solo and you'll be perfectly healthy and you can look for a gank as well. And you clear pretty fast, pretty fast, considering you're healthy as well. So, but in this scenario, obviously that wasn't the case. My mid lane was pushing and I end up full clearing I obviously don't have a smite, so I end up finishing at like 322. And that is going to look like your first clear. So, we're going to pause right here. So, approaching ganks, this is gen generally what you want to do, um, especially as a Viego. You're going to want to E before you actually show in person. So notice just before the tower is going to see me, I E, so the trail comes first before my body. And this is going to give me the extra movement speed to gap close. Obviously you don't get the kill, um, but um, I ended up full clearing and doing something with my time at the very least since Lee Sin uh, has ganked like twice since then. So at least being able to do something after my full clear is very efficient. And now I have so much more tempo than the Lee Sin, so. Now we're gonna be looking at another example. So guys, in this game, as you can see, I have not skilled yet because sometimes you can start W on Viego and they are fighting over vision and notice how I flash W instantly because we, I know we have numbers advantage, and I know that Rail can't commit on us. So let's rewind that real quick. It was like beautiful. That was fast decision making by me. It was very, very good. So Tristan at levels E. As soon as I see that, we have Man of Ange. There's no way they can win this fight. Um, if you just look at this straight picture. And bam. This... Justana cleanses like 0 0.5 seconds later because he does not see the potential of me doing that. So 
when this happens guys when you level w make sure you make your laners leash because you do not get your passives so you do no damage to camps it's like really hard to kill camps because you don't get your two strike until you level your q and also add a little thanks great manners by me and so we're just gonna look a little bit here so i do two camps and i see the bottom is fighting again we pick up the kill a base I move back to bot side notice I level my E this time um, just because I'm in fighting mode like this is not a f time where I'm like yeah I'm full clearing like by the time I'm level 4 there's probably gonna be another skirmish um, happening again like mid just like Kha'Zix just tried to gank mid for example just then and this is going to be your bread and butter ability and we're going to be talking about this next using your W and E so we're going to be looking at uh, what I was talking about previously your W and E and how they interact um, is very very useful for catching laners off guard even if they know about it it's very deceiving the amount of distance you can um, you can gap close before they even realize that you're they're in W range so in this situation I'm level 3 ganking mid because um, it's a kindred and he does not full clear so he needs to uh, or he wants to early gank and the only lane that's pretty much gankable since he started red side is mid or top and top is not going to die here since he's going to base um, and mid is in very big danger because his lane's pushing so we're gonna look at Viego's combo anyway so as I walk out of the bush I E and start channeling my W my W slows me but your E gives you movement speed, so it makes up for a little bit. And you can see it's very hard to react to. Yes, everyone could say, why didn't this, this Lissandra flash? She could have flashed. Um, but if you look from her perspective, let's just look at her perspective. Um, let's see how it looks from her perspective. Yes, it could be could have been flashable, but in the end, I think it was it's very easy for people to not flash them. And a little highlight clip for you guys. But we're gonna look at the same example again. And let's look from her perspective again, the Lissandra. So I go for the same same gank again. Uh, this time she actually sees me, so that's a bit embarrassing. But it is really deceptive, honestly. Um, any of you laners have played a video out there, so that is going to be your main ganking combo, guys. Learn that, and you will have a lot more success ganking as Viego, because. To be honest, ganking with Viego is very hard if you do not learn this combo. Alrighty, so now we're going to be looking at fighting and skirmishing. So, in this scenario, I'm invading and they do not accept that. So, I mess up a bit there, but the main point um, of what makes a good Viego player is his skirmishing. Um, in this scenario, I have Sundra, so... That's Viego's power spike, if you guys didn't know. Sundara and his second item, Death Stance or Blade, makes him extremely powerful, but the key to a great Viego player is his patience. So in this scenario, I don't commit on Hecarim. I I do damage to him, and then I wait for my CDs, and then look for Lulu. And notice here, 
I'm very patient. I cancel Hecarim's ult because I know I'm going to get CC'd. If I let, if I stay here, Ari's going to full combo me and I'm just going to die. So I use my ulti to cancel CC, which is one of the t uh, one tip for you guys out there is using your ult to cancel CC. It's a very beautiful thing on Viagra. Um, and now they've overcommitted and now I can get back in the fight or they've overcommitted on me and I've done my job. But being patient um, is just really important. It's there, like I could have been looking for the resets, which is what you want to be aware but sometimes it's just not possible like in this scenario. And they could have killed me and they probably would have died regardless, but I am still alive. So now we're going to be looking at another skirmishing scenario on how to play Viego. Um, <laughs> not ideal start, I've lost because of the Graham server. And I'm looking to engage because my Vladimir is committing. And then it turns out to be a very bad engage, so again, I cancel the fear. And I managed to survive. I could have died here if Hecarim played a little better, but he misplayed, so I managed to survive. But the main point is, I was willing to ult away to survive and fight another day. That's the key here. And the fight continues. Graves gets caught out solo. I see an opportunity here. There's no vision. I put a pink wall down. I see Hecarim solo, and this is the type of plays you want as Viego, like skirmishes rather than full on team fights. I flashed a charm. I ulti. I thought I outplayed him, but he had flash, so if we back up a little bit, it was perfectly played up until the point where I assumed he had no flash and I could have easily ulti flash predict ultied him and I would have got another re reset and probably cleaned up. But regardless this is when you want to play really aggressive, is when you get a reset um, because of your ulti reset and your, your passive. Um, the fact that you get to use a full set of abilities. We ended up winning the team fight anyway, but um, notice how I go from really patient to really aggressive. So this is why I reference Master Yi for a perfect example. His Q is based on uh, his biggest asset, and when you get a reset as Master Yi, you will also get your Q cooldown reset. And Viego's biggest attribute is getting a new set of abilities that you can just spam, and then ulting for execute against. So that is going to be all for today, guys. There will be more guides coming out. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you would like to learn more on how to get better at solo queue and carry, make sure to check out my Patreon. And I'm going to be posting a lot more content in the future. Peace.